Hey guys, I wanted to throw together a video today of uh, what tools I have, um, kind of some recommendations on tool sets to buy, you know, what I use to build my bikes, uh, what's worth spending more money on and what you can get away with uh, just from my Carver Freight or a cheaper, you know, tool brand, that kind of stuff. Um, hopefully I won't ramble on too long in this video, but I want to try to cover as much as I can because I have had a few questions from people about uh, tools and what they need to get started and that kind of stuff. So I figured I'd just give you an overview of what I have. Um, of course, not all of this is necessary, but you know, um, I'll just kind of give you an overview of what I have. So starting up here, I just have, you know, a couple of sets of hammers. Really the only two hammers you could probably get away with is like a little sledgehammer like that one and then a rubber mallet. Those two are great to have. Both of those came from Harbor Freight and I've had them for years and never had any issues. Um, so you could definitely get away with a, a cheaper version of that. You know, I have some clamps. I have a drill and I have two impacts. This is a Craftsman quarter inch impact and this is a Craftsman half inch impact. Um, so the quarter inch is great for smaller nuts and bolts. You know, if you're gonna be putting on, you know, 10 bolts or whatever that um, are smaller and you really just want the speed, that's perfect for that. The half inch is good for big bolts, lug nuts, you know, stuff with a lot of, a power, uh, you know, necessity really. So, and then the drill is just a little Black and Decker, you know, whatever drill for, you know, all kinds of stuff. But um, I do have a little drill press and a little uh, belt sander. Um, I would recommend getting one of those eventually. It's not something that you have to have. I actually just bought these two recently. So I built uh, three or four bikes without having either one of those. So definitely not a necessity, but something that uh, you can pick up for pretty cheap. Uh, and it's nice to have. Uh, over here I have a little set of pry bars. Um, I use those more when I do automotive type stuff. I haven't really used a pry bar too much on motorcycles occasionally, but I wouldn't say that it's, uh, it's necessary. But this is a nice little craftsman set. As you'll see when I kind of go through uh, all the tools I have, I really like the tools that come with like little holders and kind of modules or whatever to keep them organized. Um, so this is my toolbox. This is just one of the cheap 44 inch or 46 inch, whatever it is, uh, Harbor Freight toolboxes. I do have one of the side cabinets and this space over here is actually for a second side cabinet uh, that I need to go pick up this week. Um, so it'll be nice, you know, it's not very deep. I do really like this toolbox just because it's like 380 bucks or 370 bucks, which is ridiculously cheap for a toolbox. Uh, I've had this one for a couple years and I literally had zero problems with it. Uh, only thing I would like is it for it to be a little bit deeper. The drawers are only like 18 inches deep, I think. And uh, some of their bigger toolboxes like the, the 54 inch or the, the 72 inch, um, I think the drawers are like a full 24 inches deep, uh, which is really nice. So who knows, one day I may end up getting the, their big, you know, 72 inch or 74 inch, the whatever like the $1,100 one is, I may end up getting one of those one day just because, you know, I want that depth. But for now, this is, uh, has worked great. So top drawer, I just have all my sockets and uh, ratchets. So we have a three quarter inch here. Um, these are Craftsman modules. I believe they still sell these. And I love them because they keeps everything nice and organized. It came with these plastic trays. You know, it comes with deep well and you know normal sockets and then it has all your metric and uh, SAE sizes um, so the 3 8 um, comes in one set then this is the half inch it comes with both of these so this is all your deep well this is all your you know shallow normal set and then it does come with the ratchet and some extensions I just have my own extra ratchets and then um, nice little Matco you know, tilting swivel head set up there. So this is a really, really nice setup for me because uh, it keeps everything nice and organized. And then it's really easy for me to figure out if I'm missing something. Whenever I'm done with a bike, I like to put all my tools up on the counter, clean them all off. I use WD-40 and uh, you know, shop rag to clean all of my tools off, uh, to keep them nice. And this makes it really easy if, you know, I look over here and there's a hole, I can be like, okay, somewhere around this garage, there is a 15 millimeter socket missing and then I can go and look for it. So I, uh, I really like this setup. I do have the quarter inch set as well. It's on the top over here. So 
quarter inch, all your small, deep well. Um, so it's really, really nice setup because you know it has pretty much all the sizes you need for most things. I do have a couple of extra kind of random sockets that I needed for like one-off things. Um, but for the most part, those sets uh, cover just about everything you want. And like I said, they're craftsmen, um, and I believe they're craftsman modules is what they call them. Uh, so I would definitely recommend those. Um, I would probably stay away from Harbor Freight sockets. Um, you know, they've had mixed reviews. I've had people that I know that have used them and, and had no problems with them. And then personally, I've had some uh, totally break and, and shatter into pieces and stuff, which can obviously be pretty, pretty dangerous. So uh, Craftsman's not super expensive. Um, and they do, of course, have their lifetime warranty where if you break something, you can go into Sears or whatever and, uh, and get a replacement for it. So all of my sockets and stuff are Craftsman, and then I do have a Matco and a Snap-on uh, ratchet as well. Next drawer down is screwdrivers and picks. Uh, for screwdrivers, I absolutely love this set from GearWrench. Uh, it was like maybe 80 or 90 bucks, um, but it has all of the screwdrivers because as probably a lot of you guys know, screwdrivers are one of the things that always get lost. And you have like six flathead screwdrivers and you can't find a Phillips screwdriver to save your life. So this set is awesome because I can pull this drawer out and I know exactly where all the Phillips are, exactly what size I need. You know, and again, just like the sockets, if one's missing, it's very obvious that it's missing. Uh, and you can go and look for it so you don't like forget it in a car or whatever. So I highly recommend this set. I've had it for a couple of years and I would definitely buy it again. I would pay double for it because I'm really, really happy with how it, uh, how it turned out. So that's what also made me go out and invest in the gear wrench uh, pick set too. So these are all like 90 degree picks and hook picks and you know, all kinds of stuff for getting O-rings out and all that kind of stuff too. And again, as I say, you know, a couple of times already, I love the little modules with, you know, each tool has its own individual spot. That way, you know, when it's missing and it keeps everything organized and nice and clean. And, um, you know, I really, uh, really enjoy the, the organizational side of it. So that's what I do for screwdrivers and picks. Next drawer down is uh, pliers. So this drawer needs some help, but again, gear wrench. So a lot of my stuff is either Craftsman or gear wrench. Those are by far the two uh, brands that I prefer. Um, and all of this stuff, I will put links to everything on Amazon. I do have an Amazon affiliate account. So what that means is I can give you guys links to all this stuff. And then if you wanna buy it, you can go through the link um, and then I can get credit for it. So it doesn't change anything on your side. It just literally gives me credit because I referred you guys. Um, and it's a pretty awesome way to help, you know, support the channel and help support projects and stuff too. So no pressure or anything just to, you know, be completely transparent. I would get credit if you, uh, if you wanted to buy any of these things and to help you guys find them, I'll throw all the links to all this stuff in, uh, in the description below because I bought a lot of this stuff on Amazon. So full gear wrench plier set with needle nose and I mean everything you could need. And I have a few other random ones that I've had already. So I really like that set. Next drawer down is impact sockets. So I have a torque wrench and then I have half inch impacts, three eighths impacts. Uh, that there is an impact driver, which I highly recommend. And then of course my, uh, my two impact uh, guns themselves. So I have an Ingersoll 3 8 and then a, a Craftsman half inch. I don't really use the air tools that much, honestly, uh, just because one, I have a small air compressor, and two, uh, that half inch and you know quarter inch impact right there do 99% of anything I need to do, um, and it's just a whole lot easier to grab that with no you know hose to deal with, a compressor kicking on, or anything else. So um, I really like these sets. Um, this brand is sold on Amazon too, and I haven't had uh, any issues whatsoever with that torque wrench or uh, these sockets. So I'll throw the link to that stuff as well. Um, I would not recommend buying the Harbor Freight impact sockets, at least the 3 8 impact sockets from Harbor Freight. Uh, before I bought this set here, um, I had a, a small set of those, and I, I literally had one explode like a like cartoon, you know, gun where it just totally, you know, splits in half and kind of spreads out. 
uh, yeah, that happened to me uh, using, you know, a nice impact gun with a cheap impact socket. And that could have gone, you know, a lot worse if that part would have broken off and hit me or, you know, whatever. So uh, for impacts, you know, I, I wouldn't necessarily go the Harbor Freight route. I have seen people have good luck with the half inch Harbor Freight impact sockets. Uh, so you might be able to get away with those, but the three eighths, they're just too thin and the, and the metal is not good enough quality uh, on the Harbor Freight ones to, uh, to justify getting them. So I would just wait and, you know, spend a little bit more money and get a nice set so you don't have to worry about it, you know, blowing up on you. Next drawer down is gonna be box wrenches. I do have a set of gear wrench, uh, ratcheting box wrenches with the flexible heads. I've had these for years and they are awesome. Highly recommend. I just have the metric set just because most of the bikes and stuff I work on are all metric. So I haven't really needed any of the SAE sizes. Um, these are just some cheap Stanley normal box and wrenches I've had since, you know, I was 12 or whatever when I got my first tool set and they still work. So I haven't had any, you know, need or justification to replace them. But uh, then these here in the middle, is just a craftsman set of, uh, of tiny ones. I think it goes all the way down to like four millimeters, I believe, four all the way up to 10 stubby box and wrenches. And there's a couple of projects I've done that I couldn't have done without uh, those stubby small, uh, you know, wrenches there. So that was a good set to buy. Um, I've been very happy with these. Um, and again, I'll throw a link in the description for, uh, for those gear wrench sets. Next drawer down is all my air tools or most of my air tools and sanding and buffing and that kind of stuff. You know, this is all normal stuff. Some of this stuff is Harbor Freight and some of it isn't. Um, these angle grinders are uh, really hit and miss with Harbor Freight. I had a guy, a buddy of mine, when I used to be a BMW technician, had a Harbor Freight one that he had for like five or 10 years and that thing worked perfect and he loved it and had zero issues. I bought one, used it like four times and the little gear stripped out and it would spin, but the actual, you know, thing wouldn't spin at all. So it was like the, the little gear on the inside just totally stripped out literally within like five times of using it. So I think it's pretty hit and miss uh, with quality on that. So I ended up getting one of these, you know, I think it's like Chicago pneumatic um, angle grinders and that thing has been perfect. For a long time so that's what i use for air tools next drawer down is all of my wiring stuff so i have my multimeter wire strippers soldering heat shrink connectors extra switches two timing lights that i just kind of threw in here but um so what i use for a lot of my wiring stuff uh, then i do have you know heat shrink and other stuff up on uh, on my shelf there but for the most part wiring you know test light wire strippers that kind of stuff uh, all go in here we'll move over to this section this is kind of my catch-all drawer with measuring tools you know calipers sharpies you know little thumb screw things and feeler gauges and you know, center punch that kind of stuff just kind of the catch-all for the the random stuff here Next one down, this is a little gear wrench set I like to take on the road with me if I'm going somewhere and I know I'm going to need some sockets or whatever. This is a good little set to bring because it you know, goes all the way from like 4 millimeter up to 12 or 13, which will get you pretty far, and a couple screwdriver attachments and stuff. That was just a cool little set I bought up. Uh, those are all um, little bits, kind of like this one. You know, Torx bits and that kind of stuff. A couple step drills, some more step drills, and normal drill bits. Files and hole saws in this one. So here's again, I don't know if you guys are <laughs> starting to see a, a pattern here, but I really like gear wrench tools. So this is their file set, a little polar hole saw kit. Here's my adjustable wrenches. Again, gear wrench over here, random you know, Harbor Freight and Stanley and whatever on the other side. Um, been pretty happy with those. Next one down is just kind of a random drawer of welding stuff, extra welding wire, consumables, 
Last drill down here is pretty empty. Um, I have my battery charger in there, drill charger, you know, that kind of stuff. So got some room to grow in that drawer. Final section over here, this was the quarter inch section we talked about. Next one down is Torx set and Allen set. These are on Amazon as well and I highly recommend them. So full set of Torx bits with both the reverse Torx and the normal Torx set. There's a couple half inch, quarter inch, and three eighths uh, sets on there. So I love that these are nice and organized and clean and I can just throw them in here. Exact same thing over here with the Allen set. Pull this open for you. So nice full set of Allens. And these were not very expensive and I highly recommend them because you don't, I mean, at least I don't use Allen or Torx that often. So I didn't need to invest in a super expensive set, but these were, uh, you know, maybe 30 bucks a set, something like that. Um, but the fact that they're all nice and organized and perfect and clean and labeled and very easy to find uh, is awesome for me. And then I just have a, you know, normal Allen set back there. Next drawer down is kind of random cutting stuff. Jigsaw blades, hacksaw blades, knives, razor blades, that kind of stuff. Vice grips. And the next one down. These, I wouldn't necessarily recommend going Harbor Freight on these either. Some of these are Harbor Freight. I think this one is. It's tempting because they're like 2 or $3. But these needle nose ones, for example, if you actually really try to grab on or something, these two jaws will just like go away from each other and you won't really be able to grab on that tight. Um, but for smaller stuff, you know, if you're just clamping something down or pinching off a hose or something like that, it can work fine. Um, but if you actually need some really nice solid grip, I would just go and get the actual vice grip brand or, you know, something a little bit nicer, channel locks or something like that. Next drawer down is just a little T Allen set I got. So those come in handy a lot. This wasn't a module. This was actually had a door that came over it, but I cut the door off and threw it in here because, you know, I don't, I'm not going to be carrying that thing around anywhere. So this made more sense to, uh, to set it up that way. This drawer did have, um, some of the stuff that's up here, like my oil filter wrench and my C clamps and that kind of stuff. So this drawer is pretty empty now. It's just got a little flaring tool and another pry bar. Last drawer down here has my fa um, Mighty Vac brake bleeder. Um, down here is also a compression tester, um, which works really well. OTC is the brand. Again, Amazon um, compression tester is awesome. So that's what's actually inside the, the toolbox itself. Like I said, I'm gonna get another one of those side boxes to go on that side um, so I can organize a little bit better. Over here, this is just a lot of random hardware and stuff, but one other tool I do use quite a bit and I covered in one of my other videos is a carb sink tool. Um, if you're doing classic Hondas or anything with multiple carbs, you know, a good carb synchronization tool is, uh, is definitely worth picking up to get your bike running right. Again, I'll throw all the links to this stuff. You know, up here is just battery charger and Dremel, little stuff like that. I mean, that's most of the tools I use. Um, a vise is something I would highly recommend too. Um, I've never bought a vise new. I've always just found, you know, used ones. This one I found in a garage sale for like 20 bucks. That was all rusty and stuff. But I mean, as long as it still works, you can pull, vices are not complicated by any means. So you can pull them apart and sand them down, paint them and you know, you can get a long, long life out of a out of a vice, even if it's a cheap one. This is a cheaper one. Uh, this one I found at an antique store. This is uh, made in England. It's a uh, Verano, Perano. Let's see. Yeah, Perano, P-A-R-A-M-O. Uh, I think that's how you say it. Who knows? But made in England. Uh, this thing weighs probably 120 pounds. Um, and it was pretty rusty. Like I said, I found it at an antique store and uh, I think I paid a hundred bucks for it, maybe 125 bucks for it. Uh, took it home, sanded it down, painted it, and it's been, uh, it's been flawless. And I use the vise way more than, uh, than I thought I would before I had one. 
Um, I found these lights at Goodwill here. This is just like two kind of normal expanding lights and I can just turn the light on, go right over whatever I'm working on. You know, especially if I'm getting into a, a carburetor or something like that, I have another one right over here. So if I'm getting into something small and I need a little extra light, that's uh, what I use. So that's pretty much it for uh, my tools. Everything else, a little, little parts washer. This is my uh, welder here. So this is an Eastwood MIG 135. I have a big uh, Argon Mix tank behind it. Uh, great little welder for the money. You know, you're not going to be able to do anything super heavy duty on it. Uh, but for what I do, motorcycle stuff, small fabrication, um, that thing's worked perfect. So I, I really do love it. I, I will pick up a TIG welder pretty soon. Um, not because I necessarily need it, but more just because it's something I've always wanted to learn and kind of the next step after you uh, have been MIG welding for a while. Generally, people want to get into TIG and you know mess around with just a different style of welding. A little air compressor. It's just a little like 20 gallon Harbor Freight one. Uh, it's all right, depending on what you want to do. I wouldn't try to run any air tools, you know, any kind of die grinders or angle grinders off of it. But if you're just doing like an impact gun, filling tires, that kind of stuff, you know, you can get away with that compressor. Anything that you want to run more like continuous, you know, spray guns, sandblast cabinets, anything like that, you're going to need bigger than that. I would, I would recommend at least a, a 60 gallon compressor, you know, something that can put out 10, 11, 12. Uh, cubic feet per minute um, is probably what you're uh, what you're gonna want. So I know I said I wasn't gonna ramble on, and I ended up kind of rambling on a little bit. But I hope that gives you guys an idea of kind of what tools I have, um, what you might need, what you can get away with, Harbor Freight style, um, you know that kind of stuff. So this is all the tools I have, and it's more than enough to uh, to do most things on bikes. Um, you know, a lot of these are just normal hand tools and stuff you need. So nothing too crazy specialty wise. And like I said, I'll throw a link to everything I can find on Amazon in the description. Um, so if you want to pick anything up or curious about anything, you know, follow those links and you can uh, help out the channel that way too. So I appreciate you guys watching. Let me know if you guys have any questions or anything. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you guys uh, on the next video.